Hall from beautiful uptown Burbank, Harmontown is now in session. Hello, gang. Please welcome to the stage the game master extraordinaire, Spencer Crittenden. And the mayor of Safwa Fair, the mayor of Harmontown, Mr. Dan Harmon. Thank you. Thanks. Hello, Dan. Hi. Uh, You're so looking good. I told you backstage, but I'm going to say it again. You're looking good. Oh, thank you. I'm wearing a head to toe bombfell. They're a sponsor. Really? Clothes from the mail. <laughs> For the mail. They don't have women's clothes. <laughs> it's not controversial. <laughs> you can wear them if you're women. I, I'm, I'm assuming. I wouldn't stop you. It's not yentl. Um, <laughs> I got I got no beef with uh, with uh, women dressed like uh, guys. It's uh, I, I applaud them, especially in the shoe department. I don't like high heel shoes. I, if I find myself distracted by high heel shoes, I, I worry about the woman's comfort. It's not because I'm a good person. I just 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 worry about it. I was in a little a bit of a little bad bad mood last week. Uh, <laughs> a reason why you said. Were you guys here for the show last week? Even if they were, they, they have to pretend they weren't because I told them I hated them. <laughs> so if they admit that they were here and right. back, they have to admit to low self-esteem. Because like, <laughs> as somebody who, who's at the show live, obviously, it's a different experience to watch it to, uh, than to hear it. But I heard that one, and I, I, but I could imagine what it was like there. Like, it, it's, it's, uh, yeah, you, you seemed a little, a little grumpy that l last show. Was, was, was there anything particular that happened, or were you just in a, in a, in a just one of those moods that happens because the world is a, a crazy place right now? There are several theories. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people go with Occam's razor, it, no pun intended, and they think it's the mustache. They think the mustache has changed me. Uh, but I think it's Twitter withdrawal. I, I, uh, I was talking to my therapist about it. I said, because I, I had a similar thing when I, when, when, during the divorce. Like it was through no fault of uh, uh, Aaron's and uh, of no, uh, the, no statement about the, the, the marriage at all. It's just like, my, because my therapist warned me, it doesn't, she said, it doesn't matter when you divorce, one thing that you should be aware of, you should be, you're, you're going to find yourself hyper vigilant about injustice, and I've, I've talked about this on the podcast, where I, whereas I, 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 then sh I was like, well, okay, I'll, I'll keep an eye on that, and then cut to me just like sending these insane text messages to the guy who cleans my fish tank um, <laughs> that are just like, when you read them, I was just like, I'm just like, I'm like accusing him of like making my life into an Edward Albee play, like I, I, I'm like, this is some Virginia Woolf shit. You need to tell me how to work this light. I, it was crazy. Uh, and, and, and you know it wasn't it was it was erratic behavior because there was a detachment and there, there was a it's a like a new so Twitter we don't want to admit or I don't want to admit I'll speak for myself I'm sure a lot of healthy people are using Twitter very healthily but as you as you probably know I was like really fixated on it and and, uh, and I so I quit it for a little bit to, and and, and, and I'm you just stopped like, having just that outlet fucking... for your for that justice stuff or and you like. When you, when you, when you I do find, yes, I find myself like snapping particularly, yeah, I, f I find myself like, but now it's like, it's, a, it's about like the world, like I, I, I just like, I'm sorry I burped, but, but fuck you, I don't care what you think. Whoa, whoa! It's just like the guy he, from... He, he loves you guys, he just doesn't know how to say it. The, the, the delivery guy from Boo's Philly Cheesesteak didn't bring both raspberry iced tea snapples, and I just went... <laughs> all Patty Chayefsky about it. I just fucking like Robert duvall out. Um, and only to Cody though. Let's say, I, I was like, and because Cody is like, the, the amazing thing is, there's like a scientific experiment here where you could say, Dan, are you crazy? Do you, do you, uh, it, it, it's like, oh, well, maybe we could test it if you had like, let's say a perfect girlfriend, or let's not say, you know, perfection doesn't, we don't, we don't look for perfect people, we don't want to be with perfect people, but I'm saying like a relationship which there's nothing on the, there's nothing on the uh, wheel of fortune uh, credit, like, uh, what a metaphor. <laughs> I, wasn't there a sign, like, wheel of fortune? I, like, that was my favorite thing about the last week's show, and Eddie Pepperton said, that metaphor didn't work. <laughs> Yeah, it was like, oh, Eddie, don't, no, Eddie, you're not allowed but, to. But, but Spencer goes, wait, you can say that? <laughs> that, 
that. Uh, we, we could just say that metaphor doesn't scan. <laughs> no, no, you cannot. Not if you want. Not if you want the family to stay together. That's like. <laughs> No, no, we don't talk about dad's drinking or his metaphors. I mean, if you want to move forward and have tumult, I, I, but it could end up with you sleeping right, so at right, your so uncle's place for a while. Try, try to fix the Wheel of Fortune thing you were talking about. I, well, I just like in Wheel of Fortune, they would spin the wheel, and then sometimes I, 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 they, they would, they would, they would, they would, they would put something on credit on account or something. They would say, "Can I, can I put that on account?" And then Pat Sajak would say, "Yeah." And then I'd go, what the fuck was that? And then they just keep spinning, and then they said, I don't know what the hell it was. They would put shit on account. I'm telling you, it was like an old timey grocery store, like for the, like, a, like in a Coen Brothers movie. I don't remember that at all. I, was, I, it was I haven't like, watched that show. They in just had some shit on account back there. I'm looking it up later. Uh, you know what? I'll do it right now. No, I, 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 I so anyways. You know what's I, crazy? I saw the wheel. That wheel's tiny. It seems huge. The wheel's like it's. it's like it's it's this big. Well, you know, this goes with Sajak's what Sajak said on Letterman back in the '80s, when the the Wheel of Fortune, the country had Wheel of Fortune mania. Some other things that we fell in love with for like two weeks was like Australia for a while. <laughs> there were like eight movies about a guy named Crocodile Dundee, and then yeah. because it was the only Australian we could find that was like famous, then we tried something with a guy named Yahoo Serious, and everything just collapsed like the like Enron. Who we, was we like, lived wait, a... you're selling with something that doesn't exist now. We lived in that's, a... that's just a big desert. There's no famous people down there. We lived in a, in a Yahoo Serious and Jocko-based economy. Jocko, so. yeah. There was a guy in Duracell commercials whose catchphrase and, and soul phrase was, oi. That's all he said. <laughs> he'd say "oi," and he and it was, and then you'd you'd, you'd you'd be at a battery store, and you'd go, "Oh, Energizer, oi." There was a there was an eight year scare where barbecues were Barbies, but yeah, Foster's is Australian for beer, all that stuff. Like, there's some, there's some. Hey, I think Foster's kind of snuck in on that wave and hung out. That's yeah. the one thing. But they don't like, even drink that in Australia. That's bullshit. Right. Well, uh, what are you telling me? And, and they, they they don't. Yeah. <laughs> They don't call them shrimps, they call them prawns. Uh, look, so, so the delivery guy brings one raspberry iced tea Snapple. I didn't know, I, th I thought that that meant, I thought, because I knew I ordered one, I didn't know Cody, Cody ordered one. Cody, get your shit together. You tell the audience you hate them more, and you can't even speak English. Speak English! Get out of the country! You ever notice all those guys that can't speak English? They're, 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 they can't spell. The, the, the Republicans. They, they're, they're, I mean, what a, they're, just, they're, they're, they're just like, they can't, they can't, they, they have no mastery of their mother tongue. Like, and, they're, and they're like yelling at immigrants. It's like the immigrants are like, I had to learn like eight presidents to just to yeah. trim your bush. Like, I, this fucking sucks. One of them's bush. That's my mnemonic device. Two of them are Bush. That's, you know, uh, that's why. And then you guys raised it to nine presidents because they, you said that was too easy. <laughs> yeah. it, was uh, al it was almost two Clintons. It was almost, yeah. almost. And then we had an influx of, of unqualified Bush trimmers. Um, uh, Snapple. Snapple. And so I start going, I was, like, I, I, was, I was happy all day. And then, the guy, and then I, bring, I go get the food. I'm with my perfect girlfriend. I go out where, you know, I come back up with the paper bag. It's already, you know, you can already see the dark spots on the bottom, so you know it's going to be good. Like the, it's, 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 com it's coming through the bag. The dogs are freaking out. I think there might be a dead skunk in that bag. No, it's Philly cheesesteaks. And I take them out. One raspberry Snapple. That's how much we ordered. Cody says, there's not two iced tea raspberry Snapples? No. What? Did they, f did they, f are you fucking kidding me? God Damn it! What is with this fucking world? And I just talked for 20 minutes at the top of my voice, and that would be charming, but here's something that I do. When I, I, I kept saying, because this is how desperate I was to abuse, uh, the, 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 that I couldn't just share, I couldn't at least just be in a bad mood and share it with my partner. So I just kept saying, but I had nothing to bitch at Cody about. Like, I, I was just tabulating, like, all the injustices that had happened to me that week. Uh, so, and, and because Cody hadn't done anything <laughs> wrong, I just kept saying, it's just like, like, this guy does this to me, this guy, then the little raspberry step, like, what is with you people? Oh. I just kept saying you people to Cody, like, this is like you people being the human race. Uh, I, I, I'm, just, I'm just like, like you, know, you know, all of you, eight billion of you, you're just always conspiring to fuck with me. 
And then she was like, okay, cool. Uh, and then we watched the rest of Grumblings 2 or whatever the hell. <laughs> Every once in a while, you gotta just go check back and check it out. What was Hulk Hogan in that? In like a, <laughs> and did, it, is it good? It, it was Gremlins Two worth a, worth a rewatch? Yeah, yeah. It's worth a rewatch. Yeah. I don't know about your first question. I don't know. Uh, like, yeah. is, is anything good? I don't know. I, just, I mean, it wasn't the, Citizen Kane. The, the, it wasn't, but the, it wasn't the, even the, the Citizen Kane of Gremlin. The movies. Gremlins got really, they got really specific. They but got, let me ask you this: Have you? When's the last time you watched the first Gremlins? Because I told Cody, I was like, "You got to watch Gremlins too." She's like, "What too?" I'm like, "Jesus, I'm really robbing the cradle." But <laughs> and, and, and I'm like, "Well, Gremlins too." She's like, "I ain't seen no Gremlins one." And yeah. I was like, "Okay, well, great. Then we'll start with this." Holiday classic, and then but then you gotta see, you gotta forget. see Gremlins too. So I put in Gremlins one. Five minutes in, I'm like, what the shit and fuck? This movie is garbage. This is a, like it is amazing. Like we have a we have a serious problem in this society, and it, and 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 you can see, and the thermometer for our sickness is Rotten Tomatoes. Like like, but like it's just it's like any movie that w that had some claim on the on the on the box office pulse when a, when a certain demographic was ten years old, it just automatically is way above a 70%. And it's just like, it's just garbage nostalgia. There's, there's no comparing this shit. Like, what is it? Solar babies, 98%. Because, you know, people are like, man, solar babies, man. Custody weekend. It was does great. Solar, does that really, does solar babies really have a 98%? No, oh, but okay. I, I, I can't think of any that examples. That would be amazing. But then, but then you watch something, I know I've talked about this, Lockout. Come on! It's Die Hard in Space! It's great! It, 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 it has like a 20% or something. It's ridiculous. They worked hard on that movie. It's good! The, 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 what, was it called Lockout? Yeah. I don't know Lockout. Yeah. Um, yeah the, the, I'm the, the, that's that a down. crime. Right yeah, and, and, you know, Edge of Tomorrow is... Church, remember I, Lockout. We're watching Lockout. Anyways, like there's a lot of movies with like 80% of Rotten Tomatoes that are just, they're just crap. And it's just like, it's just people just like... They're just like, oh, I will defend my legacy. And you just, you got to go back and watch. If you can't look into your soul, gentlemen, uh, uh, at least look, at least rewatch some of these pieces of shit. Um, oh, you, it's okay you, to be you, you nostalgic. Have... Just stop pretending that it makes it a good movie that you liked it. You were a, t a little itty bitty little dummy. I almost said, I almost said the R word. <laughs> I want to, yeah, that, that last sentence, you get, if you rewind it, you go like, yeah, it seems like Dan's get a little less, uh, uh, his famous ar articulate uh, charm. Because I, I, like, I was just the whole time, I was like, ah, my sister's retarded. Okay. <sighs> but now you can just use dotard. Do yeah. Dotard? Wait, what's Kim Jong-un went 14th century on Trump and called him a dotard. Oh, a dotard, yeah. And everybody was like, what's a dotard? I mean, I saw, I, I saw that. Not on Twitter. A dotard is a great news. word. Like, look, I gotta be honest. Uh, point one for fucking Kim Jong Un. That's fucking. <laughs> well, he, again, he, these guys have to he, learn English he, in schools. He didn't. Is, is there a Korean word for dotard? Or, like, how did like did somebody translate that and they go? Well, he's talking about a, like a senile, bewildered old fucker. Uh, we in, in in Korean we have a word for that, but like the, the closest I can get in English is dotard, which means, no one has used yeah, can you since imagine? Jane Austen. Yeah. But that's fucking good. So fucking yeah, like I I I, I like Kim Jong Un a little bit more than our president right now. Yeah. Because either he spent, he paid a little more attention in English class, also, or or he just pay, he listens to some of his advisors. Yes. His, you know, like, also, his haircut, he's one guitar away from being the lead singer of a very successful rockabilly band. He looks amazing. I wish he'd go gray, but only in the middle. And yeah. Have that, like, no, he'd be fucking Brian Setzer. He'd be oh. fucking sexy as shit. That would be incredible. He would, yeah. Uh, okay. Anyways, uh, I mean, like, he, he look, almost the, the, like you know what you know what he's gonna start looking like in his old age. Kim Jong Un. He's gonna yeah he's gonna he's gonna look like a uh, Korean uh, Steve Van Sant from The Sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he's got he, whatever that character. Paul, what, not Paulie Walnuts, the other guy. What was it? What was Steve? Jo Joey Bag of Tits. I don't know. Joey, yeah, whatever. <laughs> that was that's half the characters. No, he's got the lip. He's got the lip. Uh, totally. Oh yeah, that guy. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. And he's played in Bruce Springsteen's band. But you gotta get the lip. Anyways, god damn it. Your impressions never cease to amaze me, but I don't care what you think. I like him. Oh, thank you. 
Dan, this is not going to be one of those nights where you're feeling persecuted. This is a night where you feel safe and you feel happy and protected. Well, anyways, thank you for... Uh, 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 this is a sponsor, Bombfell. I'm wearing head-to-toe Bombfell. You look good in it. It fits you, it fits you nice. I, uh, Lee. I, 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 the pants came... The first pair of pants... They, they, were, they were a number off. They I was didn't, there, didn't get the number wrong. I was it's in just, the room when he tried them on. He actually took his undies, took his pants off, went down to his skivvies. Put them in a bag, sent them back, like a Netflix DVD of Gremlins 2. Said, this is one Gremlin number off. Um, they sent back these Gremlin 1 pants. And like, like Gremlins 1, they, you, you, you remember them as being twice as good as the other pair. But inside, it's a mess. That movie is a goddamn mess. The gremlins in your head is like a fucking like. It, it's it's the, filled with a sense of wonder. It's a Spielberg production, for God's sake. And it's a uh, Christmas movie. It's a great Christmas classic. Oh, and it's just oh, like yeah. oh, the performances, and it's just like oh, it gets you right here. And then the gremlins are scary, and then all the things, and you just start watching it from the first frame. You're like, what is? What kind of weird driver's ed movie is this? What, who, how many beginnings are we going to do? Like, what, what, is the, how, what are you explaining this shit for, you fucking idiots? You shouldn't have made a movie. Fucking terrible people. All right, so here's your billion dollars. What are you going to do? They make gremlins too. When are we going to listen? I tell you I hate you. You come right back. I'm like, I'm gremlining you. I'm gas grim light grim lighting. You're grim lighting. Like grim lighting. Yeah. Grim lighting. Please don't let that be the title of this episode. Yeah. yeah. Grim lighting doesn't really work. <sighs> I'm gonna I'm gonna invoke the pepitone. Uh, that, that that doesn't work. Anyways, look, I'm not gonna say I'm sorry for last week because uh, because I am and I'm ashamed. Uh, <laughs> But he's not going to say. And I'm a liar. <laughs> no, I, 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 there, no I, if, I, if I make an apology, I want to make it the official one where it's like the three parts. You acknowledge your crime. Okay. I, uh, I told the audience I hated them. <laughs> you express remorse. I feel bad. Wait. You, you, are you allowed, not, well, to, make, are you allowed to make that face after you say number I two? Feel, I feel bad if it made anyone feel bad. That, 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 that is, you know, but that's not one of those apologies where like, I'm sorry you felt bad, I'm not doing that. I'm saying I do feel bad if anyone felt bad for it because you, it was a, the first part is a lie. I don't hate the audience. You make me feel wonderful and you're wonderful people, especially the people that are closest to the people that do come here. It was obviously just as with Cody, it's like I'm just saying you people to a bunch of people who bother to be close to me when I'm having like some kind of like fucking moment of turmoil. So, it, but, but I'm also a clown on stage and I, I don't get the impression that, that that anyone got hurt, but if you got hurt, I, I, I do feel, of course, bad that it hurt you because it would be a terrible reason to hurt someone because it was, it was a lie. Uh, and that, so then the third part is the commitment to change. So, all right, I'm not going to stop drinking. Uh, <laughs> when I yelled at Cody because I, I quit Twitter because I'm like, well, I'm not going to stop drinking. Uh, I gotta change something or this isn't a real apology. Uh, I quit Twitter. Um, that wasn't, that wasn't, I'm mixing those two things up. But I was, I did quit, I quit Twitter because I was being mean to the people around me on Twitter. I was like, which is like, from what I see on intervention, I'm like, oh, you're a junkie. You're like being mean to people because you're like so focused on this fucking thing. So then I quit Twitter and then I'm like, now I'm like, now I'm having like these weird highs where I'm like, let's go look at shirts. And then, and then like these weird lows where I'm like, you people in your iced tea. Um, and, 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 but, I'm, but I feel like it's like, it's, yeah. it's, be, it's better than what, I, 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 it's happening because I was, uh, having, a, I was having a problem. And it's, uh, so even though it's resulting in half of the time, I'm like a fucking like crazy per or the whole time I'm a crazy person, half of the time I'm a, unprofitably crazy person like uh it, it still it seems like okay well i'm gonna wait and see if that goes like this like uh and then what what then i'll be a person that's not on twitter but is also sane yeah it, it was, it's a weird thing like it's like you know i just was on tour with you know ryan styles and proops and joel murray and the gang and and like we you know we have fun and we you know we we go do comedy shows but on the bus all we do is vent about what was in the news that day, and we get to all of our chest, but when we have to like, like I'm a moody person, I go up and down too, like, but I feel like my downs are more regular than they used to be. Like I'm, I'm like I'm in a bad mood more just because you know like just the way things are going right now, and it's nice to be able to go out and do comedy shows and make people laugh and tell stupid jokes and stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. like, uh, 
it, but sometimes it feels almost like disingenuous or dishonest to find any humor in anything. Like, like, yeah. it, it, like you feel like you're forcing it. Like, That's why I was, I was like, yeah, I'm not even being funny anymore. I'm just like arguing with people about shit. I, I, like, I used to be able to keep my humor about it. It was like, like that was my rule. Like, well, if I can be funny while still letting someone know they're a piece of shit, you know, like, I, I, then, th then that proves they're a piece of shit. If they can't be funnier than me, if they're a piece of shit, then they're like, you know, if it, if I swear, I, I, I want to tread lightly here, but, 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 but I, 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 I say this as a as a as an observation of how unfunny they are if a nazi could ever make anyone laugh you know like if there was if it was possible for them to be remotely entertaining that would be a really dangerous demographic um <laughs> Because they'd be like, they, they, they don't, they, they're, they, have any, have they, ever, they, ever, ever, ever? They, they, they can't smile and they don't have pets. Hitler had a dog. They can't smile and they Hitler don't have Hitler had a pets. dog. <laughs> Fucking Trump doesn't have a dog. <laughs> he doesn't have a dog. I didn't, it's, and so and Nazis don't have pets? Is that, is well, that, Hitler loved his dog more than people. I know that. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people, I know a lot of misanthropes are, are big animal people. Rob Schraub. Uh, he's not misanthropic. Oh, dude. Yeah. Oh no. He loves people. <laughs> All right. Let's just not. Let's not get derailed. <laughs> he loves animals. But I don't think he's. Oh Jesus. All yeah. right. Yeah. No. Let's let, let, let's 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 get our guest up here. Oh, my, fuck my, yeah. My, I my, about my, that. my good friend Duncan Trussell. Duncan Trussell. Uh, Could have used him last week. To bring the... Is he here? He might yeah. have to walk in through the other door. Duncan Trussell. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, boy. Sorry about that. I, 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 Sorry about what? I lost track of time. So that's okay. That means you're doing God's work. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> See, you already made the whole that room happier. Mm. Nitrous yeah. is always doing God's work. Well, no, a lot of people used to think that. They used to think you could use nitrous oxide to commune with spirits. It's, there's actually in, in that book, The Brief History of Nearly Everything, like if you run out of fuel in your ear beating cannon and you want to really like fuel up and have shit to talk about to just, just beat people's ears into a bloody pulp, <laughs> read that book. And apparently some famous per scientist was really into nitrous oxide and like used it to commune with angels and stuff. <laughs> so yeah, it is doing God's work to do oh, nitrous shit. oxide. I was right. <laughs> I had a friend in high school. It was the best dungeon master ever. Was I mean, it Graham? But yeah. Well, yeah, but if he's, Fucking I don't know, if he's, he might be lit. I know he lived no, in the shadow. Okay. Yeah, it's, like, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, Graham was. Not, yeah, but I and I don't want. I don't want to embarrass. I don't want to, if Graham is listening. I don't want to embarrass him. But 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 like he, I lost. You know, I lost track of him forever. And then he like I, I was like an adult in Milwaukee, and he showed up, and he had like a he had a big tank of nitrous in a, in a plastic hefty bag, and I just it, and it was like we just the best day of your life. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any sucking on a garbage bag and talking Jesus about how I'm destined Christ. to lead people or is, something? Is there any downs? Is, is there any uh, deleterious? You like, might get uh, brain effects? holes. Oh yeah, it'll fuck you up. It's not. It's like, not is, does it hurt, the, does it hurt the, your the, brain or? Well, what, it, what happens is people will make the terrible mistake of putting a nitrous tank in their fucking van, right? They're like, let's go in the van and do nitrous, man. But they leave the tank on while they're doing balloons and they pass out and, they and the van fills up with nitrous oxide. They don't die. Their bodies vibrate into infinity and they vanish. <laughs> <laughs> they level up, Wait. kids. They level up. It sounds like dying. Have you ever seen, it like, sounds like, dying. Have you ever seen like an abandoned van? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I would say I would say just to start off, don't have a van. Uh, yeah. But, but, but like, does, does doing nitrous like hurt your brain and give, kill brain cells or anything bad? Or is there? Is I there... mean, dentists give it to you. There's yeah, but you, you go to the dentist. <laughs> but once, just, but, once but, or but, twice yeah, a year. Well, am I just am I just am I just a child of Nancy Reagan or just assuming that it gives you brain damage because I heard that somewhere? There's or? some I mean, there's I, some I, isolated I to, cases to to somebody, of brain holes. They're not. It's not like all these people are getting brain holes. It's an epidemic because like, people have been doing nitrous for fucking ever, and there's not like brain holes all over the place. There's a cute few isolated cases. It's definitely bad to deprive your brain and body of oxygen, and I would not be surprised if it did cause... But also that depends on the mixture, because if you go like half air and half nitrous, I don't know how bad that is for your brain. You know what you sound like? A nitrous oxide dealer. Oh, no. 
I definitely don't have free canisters. Can, can we? Can you sound we... like I'm negotiating a nitrous oxide deal with the nitrous oxide. I don't know, man. I mean, maybe if we go half, your brain will be okay. It's five dollars a balloon, baby. Can we? Is it, is, it, is it irresponsible podcasting for us to get a tank and some balloons for our next show? No. 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 Oh, man. Oh, I know how to do it, too. I know how to get a tank. So well, let, let me answer that question with a question. Which is it an irresponsible society to <laughs> elect a rapist Nazi and, <laughs> and, and then just hang out and watch the world fall apart uh, without doing nitrous <laughs> publicly? So you... So... It's not know. irresponsible. We can do it then. Yeah, yes, I'm you're saying you're yes. signing yes. off on it. Yes, Rome okay. is burning. Let's try Yahtzee if you haven't. <laughs> My advice to everyone: don't try, try Yahtzee. everything. Anything but Yahtzee. I, I I got that covered. Yahtzee? You don't need to try Yahtzee. <laughs> yeah, There's Yahtzee. only one lemonade you can get from the lemon of 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 social upheaval, d deterioration, whatever we think we're experiencing. The only lemonade is the, is people, you know, popping like popcorn, having a little controllable nervous breakdown and going, well, if this shit's happening, I'm going to try making that birdhouse. Well, let's talk, okay. And that, guy, and that guy turning out to be the Frank Lloyd Wright of birdhouses and didn't know it because he was just like, if I keep voting Republican, I'll get rewarded. And, and then he's just like, wait, he said what to who? I'm the birdhouse. Boom. I'm a genius. I never needed to. I'm a Democrat crap now but the problem the problem with frank lloyd uh right birdhouses is that they look great but they're really uncomfortable like okay. like well also like, the birds the, 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 hate them i'll yeah. tell you the birds hate them because frank lloyd wright's gimmick was like trying to like you know like oh can you make a home merge with nature and the birds like what the fuck do you think i'm moving in here for <laughs> i you... wanted a bird house <laughs> i want to say the n-word so bad i want the bird to like say punctuate it with just the n-word no no just, wait, like, look you, you you just said that like you could try anything now that, that a Nazi no, rapist no, is well, no, I, I, look, But you I, know, I want to talk to you about this. I'm man. not going to try not y Yahtzee. <laughs> I don't. I, yeah. I want to talk to you about this this idea of like Rome burning. All right. Because I I was thinking about today, uh, and I was thinking like, okay, if you have to pick an evil monster to deal with in your life, would you rather that evil monster to be smart? Or would you rather that evil monster to be Donald Trump? Right. But I think we've all agreed. I mean, we've all had this conversation on each other's podcasts. And th we've all we've had nine months to talk about this. And what we've arrived at is it's not really him that's, that's bumming us out. It's it's the it's the the reveal of the of the engine underneath our country that that, that made it possible for him to be elected. It's the yeah. and it's the reaction that everyone's but having to him being elected. No, he, he's swell. Uh, yeah, 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 no, I, 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 I agree with you. Yeah, I think we all agree with that but that we're, that, that we're like yeah if you're gonna like oh it's it's it, he's like hitler but he's not he hasn't done anything yet no well, i don't mean that like, i mean and like, he's funny he's got like clown hair and no, he's running you, around he's farting and but 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 he but, probably doesn't fart but the fact that we oh, no, they, 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 they had to move his sphincter to the crown of his head for his weird experimental hair every time he, remember the time when he got up and didn't sign the the, the uh, executive order and he was supposed to sign some shit and he just got up and walked out. And oh Pence yeah, like, motherfucker! You're like, no, you got to do the thing. He clearly pooped his pants. He made a, he made he oh, made wow. he, he made chocolate poopies and had to get the yeah. fuck out of there. Probably right. Yeah. No. Yeah. At his age, I mean, I shit my pants all the time. Yeah. On the reg, as the kids say. <laughs> <laughs> On the reg, fam. <laughs> oh, grandpa! If you, me, if you get me high enough and I cough and then walk away. Be glad we weren't carpooling. That's that's. But 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 no. I mean, we're but it's like if we thought that we could have just uh, him, you know. It's, but it's what he represents and all that shit. It's and it's we all we all. I think most of us even like we we're we're like you know what? And now it doesn't even matter. What if we? If if the if the if the blue side of this like weird two headed beast like now takes advantage of the nauseating like like like, right. like what, whatever happens next we all agree we're more we're going to be more bummed out about but universal health care but, but it's no universal health care is that's what happens is you get this bumbling guy who freaks out all of his underlings to the point of trying to jam through these uh, rotten fucking health care bills alerting everyone in the country 
This is what happens when you let super wealthy people be in control. They don't care about you. This isn't a new idea. This has been happening since the fucking Industrial Revolution. So you have this nice reminder. Look what happens when they start running shit. They don't care if you die. Now everyone knows it. And then because John McCain has this brain tumor and he doesn't care about getting reelected and he's not in it for politics anymore, this guy stops the whole fucking thing, which means we're one step closer to universal health care. So I'm not saying this is because Trump is, is, is like meaning that to happen or good. He's obviously just this, uh, he's exactly what you would imagine the Antichrist would look like, but still, <laughs> In the, no, really, you know, like if you don't really, you do you guys, does anyone here look at the Bible and check to see if like anyone's the Antichrist? Because Trump every might day. be the Antichrist. Well, yeah, last time I checked, the Antichrist was uh, had a, a fatal head wound uh, that he recovered from. It's, it's like a description. Is that true? I was, yeah, I, I tweeted it what? to you because you were you were talking about something that I was like, oh, is it because we always, you know, listen, I don't the, always check my everybody Twitter. always thinks the book of revelations is talking about Bill Clinton or whatever, you know, like they always they always update who it's talking about. Right. Yeah. So, everyone but, thought Obama was the Antichrist. But one thing's for sure, because I was always going like, well, I've read revelations. I, I, I'm waiting for a guy who it gets shot in the head in like a war, but he survives. And then everyone he's like a war hero because it kind of says I looked at he had a he had a wound in his head and yet he he lived or something like that it was like oh god it's his scalp surgery it's his fucking oh, is it, like, like 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 if you could if you if you were looking at donald trump but you had the x-ray vision provided you by christ um you wouldn't see his fake hair and, and anything you'd see so you'd see him as a ghost and aura and you'd see at the top of his head just like darth vader there'd be this like amazing like fucking like le like weird symbol like or something symbol. like where this weird doctor tried to like twist his head like a like a fucking like end of a sausage to make his sideburns turn into his hair something that something that hurt him enough that he ran into his wife's bedroom and pulled her hair out and yelled at her and and and, and, and as she put it uh f f had sex with me f with his semi-hard penis it's, 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 yeah <sighs> And then she went and cried in her mom's room for two days, and when she came back, her hair was still spread on the bed, and he was laying there in his bathroom, and he said, does it hurt? Mm. So logistically, <laughs> if we want to do nitrous, do we get tanks and balloons up here? Like a, I, I know how to do it. I know how to do it. I know how to get nitrous. <laughs> I looked it up. I know how to get nitrous. So I think we I, do I, 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 Also, are we, are we breaking any, any kind of criminal yeah, codes yeah, by doing probably. that? Probably. I know, I know right. how to do it. Not if there's a dentist present. No. You don't need a dentist. So what you do is you apply for a catering license in L.A. <laughs> for real? Yeah. And if you apply for a catering license, because they have to, I guess, caterers are like always making whipped cream or something. Oh, yeah. Ah! Always. They can't you get can buy a tank of nitrous well, that, Yeah, but that's not... We're well, we talking about how to score, not how to make it legal. No, you're saying, you're, no you, you can man. buy it. You can just buy it. I can buy. No, we, can we go we, right now. Yeah, yeah, we, we buy some whipped cream chargers. Yeah, you, you, and probably you, get you back can go buy nitrous show. nitrous little canisters and do whippets. All, all, yeah, all. but those are annoying. You get these silver things. Oh yeah, all no, over I know. I'm just saying tank. it's not impossible. But what I'm, about I'm that? Legally, legally, we're probably not allowed to do a podcast. Where no, we not get for up recreational here and, purposes. And just inhale balloons full of nitrous But if you get arrested for that, that's the coolest way to get arrested. There's, I, cool, there's cool ways to get arrested. I just, I, I want to make sure we know who we're getting into. I want to get arrested for doing nitrous oxide on Harmon Town. All right, let's fucking do it. <laughs> I want to get dragged downtown. Uh, the, like, like, like the Van Halen video. Where just like, like, uh, we're, we're, we're in towels for no reason. <laughs> Panama! Um... <laughs> The, 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 uh, look it up. And look up that thing where he pulled his wife's hair out of her head. Uh, it, 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 they, they wore towels in Panama in the, in the video? I think, yeah, there was like a shot of David Lee Roth being like, oh, but, but I don't, and I don't know if it was fake or, it was probably fake. I mean, like, what, what the, but it was like, it was David Lee Roth in a towel, uh, uh, being like, like, like pulled, like, I don't know, from a hotel by cops or something. Oh, but, oh boy. That's a score. I think it was Panama, yeah. Anyways, uh, look. What about that girl in intervention who inhaled the, uh, the, the, the keyboard cleaner stuff? Is that, is that, what's the keyboard cleaner? Is that, that's not, that's not the same as doing nitrous. That's no, not that's nitrous oxide. Some that's like some kind of, other kind of chemical. Some kind of chemical. Yeah. So she was fucking herself up. She still made it through. She emerged, you know, I, I watched the reunion specials and. Yeah, right. But 
Yeah, I wonder where she's at now, man. They that need to the, do that where the are most they am- now. That, that's like the top. That's all the, the intervention fans' favorite episode because she's just <laughs> she's. I'm living the you know. dream. There's a there's a gif there's a gif of her where she's like so she goes like I feel like I'm walking on sunshine. It's so disturbing. Wait, there, there's there's a there's a cleaner specific to keyboards. Uh, it, 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 it's a well, it's like circumboards, keyboards. Oh wait, I've got a great story about this man. Like so, Compute, computer cleaner, like a oh, blast compressed air. air. Oh, I got you. Yeah, I, I have some friends in New York who sublet their apartment to somebody, and they got a call from their landlord, and their landlord's like, "Hey, you need to come back," and they're like, "Why?" And they're, he's like, "Well, because the person you sublet your apartment to is is dead on your couch," and so. They come back to the fucking apartment, and this guy is surrounded by keyboard cleaner. Like, it's the, the, the compressor. He went to Target and bought, I guess, a thousand dollars worth of keyboard cleaner, and committed suicide oh. via keyboard cleaner. And he had melted into their couch, so it's just this like purple, bloated, melted uh, corpse uh, surrounded by Target bags and keyboard fucking cleaner. What a dick! That's a... <laughs> <laughs> bad... That's bad subletting. Yeah. We know that's that. That's like, come on! Like, that's Whatever like, happens in manners. <laughs> fucking, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, so yeah, many better you're ways a, to You're live. a guest in their house. <laughs> yeah. Asimov's four laws of subletting. <laughs> <laughs> First, do do no do no cleaners. Wait, so how do you do? Clean. Do, 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 do you do you just inhale it? Like, what do you yeah, do? you. I guess you inhale it. You yeah. like, you would pop. I don't know. Maybe they put it in a bag and breathe it out of the bag. I'm not sure. Uh, she was just sucking on a straw, like, uh, and she, yeah. she had like burns on her lips. Like, yeah, I right, think you want the constantly... propellant or whatever that liquid stuff is. I think it's that chemical that they're into. But who knows? Uh... <laughs> The other, but she, she goes. Uh, so, their so, their so, bottom so. lines in the intervention episode is that they were gonna like um, call the um, call animal control because she had cats that she loved, but they were like worried about her cats. So that was like you know an intervention. You had to try to find these bottom lines, right. leverage and stuff. So they pull the trigger on because she walks out of the intervention, and then they're like, all right, call call the cops, or call the animal people about the cats. The the cops come to her door, and then it's like she's like hanging out in her bedroom with her sister, and then the and then someone says like. Hey, uh, the the police are here, and she goes like the po po. Hey, can I say something kind of self indulgent, just to add to something that you said before I came out? You said this thing. And you're not on Twitter anymore. You said this thing. I don't even. I, I'm not going to quote you right, so forgive me. But you said something else. I don't feel like making people laugh. I'm I'm down more than I'm up. Yeah, yeah. And. Uh, you know, man, and this is really cheesy. Maybe somebody could play the national anthem while I say this, but I feel like the moment people like you and you start getting like that, then if there really was some kind of nefarious cobble of evil people who wanted to destroy art on planet Earth by making artists feel completely hopeless, then the moment you guys are like, I'm not gonna go on Twitter anymore. I'm not gonna do this shit anymore. They fucking win. They're really winning then. And then the thing that you guys put out into the universe gets thwarted by what? Some fucking, like, what? Like, really? Well, you know, know, I, uh, that's, that's depressing that's, to me. That's part of the bummer of, of walking away from it, and it's also part of the, uh, the hook that keeps you there. But the, the nice different split is just begin off the white and, like, like go away, evolve, come back. Like, I'm right. not going yeah. mean, to – I didn't delete my account. Tw- just, Twitter doesn't have to be a factor in it. Like, the, 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 the beauty of being on tour, like, for, you know, I was on the road for the last couple of weeks, is that when you're, you wake up in a bad mood and you, you turn on the news and it's just, it's just, like, it's shocking and it goes against everything that you believe in. It's just – like just simple things like his ties and his fucking you know like like the, the, like the, the misuse of the, yeah. of the English language and like all that shit like forget about the hatred of women and people of color and fucking every fucking other thing uh, the, 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 the great news is that we have to like stay like focused enough to go on stage and still be funny and then the fact that we get to go do that is awesome and because when we're on stage that's the easiest part of the day like and to go out there and you know just just tell a dick joke. It's, it's, make, make the world happy. Sure. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, no, yeah, you, you're absolutely right. Like, we, we, we can't just all descend into sadness and darkness and... and no, you have to double fight. It's like, that's the thing. It's like, not only do you have to, like, not descend into sadness and darkness, you have to, like, triple activate. Like, the whole point is, like, to go the opposite direction, yeah. even though it is bleak and horrible. I mean, it always seems like... A, God forgive me, man, but because no, com there's no job of a comedian or job of anybody else or job of comedy or any of that <coughs> bullshit. But just from a you know basic like, when the darkness grows, then that's when you're really supposed to be shining the light. Praise God! And if you're not For fucking real. doing that, then what are you doing? Exactly, I agree. We I, we, but the, the thing about like now, like like if you're going to be a comedian, and the, the thing like comedians should stick to comedy. And, uh, and and leave politics to the experts. Well, there are no fucking experts. Like politicians should stick to politics and not do comedy. Uh, but when you go on stage and you tell a joke, it's really funny. Like like we were in Indianapolis. You can t you can talk shit about Mike Pence because they hate him in Indianapolis. <laughs> you go outside of Indianapolis, they love. It's a red state. They they love him there. But you can hammer on fucking Mike Pence in Indianapolis. Um, but the thing is, when you tell a really like, let's say it's not even a political joke, you just mention him or say something you know stupid, the people. People don't feel comfortable laughing about anything political. And I was like, you know, they, I know that like no one wants to hear Dan and I or our guests or Spencer and like, us talk politics about Trump. We don't have anything new to say. It's just us grousing about the same old shit. But when you do a show like, like you know, we go out and do improv and do comedy, you can tell some neutral joke and mention Donald Trump or mention Nancy DeVos or mention whoever. People that might have laughed don't know who they're sitting next to. And they don't know if the person next to them is going to be really into that or not into that or whatever. So just every, everyone is just kind of just kind of neutralized, and things d don't get to be as funny because no one knows if their parents are going to be pissed off or the neighbor is sitting next to them or whatever. Like comedy, you either have to be not talking about politics at all and be hilarious, or be Lenny Bruce and be punk rock and George Carlin and shit and like fucking be so so active. Be a comedian. Yeah, exactly. I mean that's the idea. It's like fuck it. The idea is like okay, fine. I, my instincts are telling me this is funny, and I'm in some stupid time period where people are incredibly confused. Okay, fine. We'll still blast it out there, man. Blast it out there because the moment any of us stop blasting it out there. Then if they're then 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 they win. Right, but they win. They win if you keep blasting and you and you. Uh, I, in my opinion, at least, this goes for me. There's other people. There's people out there that are good at uh, being angry, and we want them to be angry. Like, uh, uh, yeah. but but I like if 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 I've lost my humor, then what am I going to fall back on? My my uh, p political science degree? I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Look what about. Jimmy Kimmel just uh, did. Me I, either. No, Jimmy, Kimmel, Jimmy Kimmel, what he did is he either read, a, he read, he fucking researched, and it was like, that's that's my point. Like, it, it was like, that it, 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 like I, that's why I'm like, I need to fucking step out of this, like, you know, professional wrestling ring, stop running around with a folding chair that looks identical to everyone else's and, like, just being part of the general melee because part of the, part of what the enemy wants you to think is that life sucks and that it's chaotic and Doesn't. stupid and it, and all that stuff. So, like, that is why, like, you know, when, when, when Lauren Duca tweets, when, 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 you know, when, when, when my heroes on Twitter right now, they're the people that are, like, they're, they're, they have this insight, but then they're also like, they have this grace because, and then you go like, oh, that's an advertisement for being with the, on the good guy's side. Because if you can, it's not that this stuff isn't important and shouldn't make you angry. It's that you, if you're a billboard, you can't be a billboard dripping with shit. Cause then everyone's like, well, I don't want to buy that razor. It's covered in shit. Like that person's not happy. Like right. th that person keeps telling me, like, pe people give me advice all the time. Like for 40 years, the reason why I haven't quit drinking yet is because everyone that's ever asserted it with any degree of, of you know assertion is they're miserable and I was just like, like it's, it's it's always a deal breaker I'm like look man I said come up to me Chris Hardwick's like the biggest billboard for sobriety I've, 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 I've ever encountered like he's a genuinely a happy seeming guy but you know behind his eyes I think maybe he goes home and does stuff to like uh, oh, there's, uh, there's fucking there's like, but that's, I, that's I, none of my business I, I've but, been to his like, place what? I've been to his place and there's target bags fucking but, yeah. everywhere <laughs> But he, <laughs> but he, uh, I'm just saying, I, I don't know what's in those bags, but. but he's like, he's like the most pleasant, like, anyway, I'm, I'm just saying like when you, if it's, if you're telling people to, uh, lighten up or if you're telling people to, you know, you really ought to know your facts or anything you're, whenever you're telling somebody else what to do, like, holy shit, you better be happier than them. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, with comedy, man, the thing I always love about it is not so much. It's like ethical compass or moral compass. 
what I love about it is the way it warps reality. And I love the way that like with comedy and, and, a, and a really great, great comedians, what they do is regardless of anything other than just this, and now this is not to say, this is how we should act. Comedians should only be funny or comedians should not be funny now or whatever. I'm just saying the moment you encounter great art, whether it's comedy or a painting or a movie, you feel hope. Because you're like, humans are fucking cool. That's amazing. And when you start watching comedians warp what's happening right now in any kind of way at all that's successful, no matter how lofty or how mundane, I think it adds to the sum total of joy in the world. And the more joy there is in the world, I just got back from Burning Man. <laughs> <laughs> The more joy there is in the world, the more chance we have to make sure that we don't do this again. And that's why it's important to fucking fight. Thank you. Uh, I said Nancy DeVos, I meant Betsy DeVos. Ah. I'm still wondering if it's Lauren Duca, because the last time I, 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 half the time I say Lauren DeLuca. And I, and I'm like, oh. Uh, the, the, but uh, yeah, I mean, no, I don't. I don't think we're disagreeing on any any important points, right? Where I I I, 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 I mean, you 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 you're saying it's important to be um, you're saying it's important to be to for for I, I, entertainers. That, that that word seems cringeworthy. I, I, but but like like it, it, they become important. I mean, this Kimmel thing. The fact that I'm not on Twitter and I heard about the Kimmel thing is why Jimmy Kimmel did a good thing. Like, like it, it became, it's, it, it, it does, it raises all this awareness. It's like, yeah. it, it's, a, it, it's like he, it's a, it, 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 and, and it, but it, it's particularly great that it wasn't just some quip, you know? It, it, was, it was also, like, on top of it, he was, like, passionate and in yeah. a funny way, like, put, you know, is like, is like making this part of the sideshow, the now front and center. That's, that is the, sh that's why it's so important. I agree with all that. And that's exactly why I got, I, I like, I'm just sitting there talking to, I'm just arguing with fucking Ooh, Nazis and it. going like, I, going, I block you. I'm going to block you. I can't believe over the last couple of days, I, I started to like Kim Jong-un, the NFL and Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> yes, it's the apocalypse, baby. <laughs> When, when, when did quarterbacks become agitators? It's fucking amazing. <laughs> it's glorious. That's fucked up. It's glorious. I can't believe yeah. it turns out James Woods, when he when he played Roy Cohn, apparently was doing it because he thought he was a cool guy. Like I, I didn't know James Woods was a fucking monster. <laughs> Holy right. shit. I mean, I thought I was thinking like guys play monsters when you're like casting a monster. Like we need a monster. Ah, let's get that guy. But it's not like an actual monster that shows up. A guy's like, yeah, monster performance. Uh, here we go. You need to do this cocaine. You need to do this cocaine. <laughs> Cut, Jimmy. Great. Oh wow, you're amazing. You, ex you, I just, I'm conditioned by Hollywood to expect that guy to be like, to act like Tom Hanks as soon as they call cut. You know. <laughs> Like, where's a baby? Let me kiss it. No. But he's just like fucking uh, slime in a, in a, in a human-shaped cup. Yeah, the, 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 what, what you're saying, I think what we're all saying is like, like you, you can't just be a comedian and, and go out and tell jokes and have fun now. You have to do two things at once now. You have to be like doing squats and push-ups at the same time. Now you, have, you, have to, you have to still be fighting for what you believe in, which is not always going to be funny. And then you still have to... Uh, smile and, and help other people laugh and, and do that it too. It just depends on where you land, man, because it's like some of us believe that like, uh, God damn it, what do they say in Game of Thrones? Chaos is a ladder. What do they say? Oh, is that yeah. the word? <laughs> Chaos but some is of a us, ladder. Some, some people just believe that it's like, yes, if you can, art, whatever, the, the, I, what I always loved about comedians is that you, you, comedians get to do whatever they want. That means that if you want to be completely shallow, have nothing to do with politics and just blurt out some ridiculous thing, you can do that, it's okay. Also, if you feel in, like you have some heady thing to say that has no punchline, you can say that too. Yeah. You're a fucking comedian. You represent the part of the human spirit that is unconquerable by the gods, which means that you are ultimately free. You can do whatever you want, no matter who the president is or who the president isn't. So no comedian has a moral obligation. No comedian doesn't have a moral obligation. But any time a comedian successfully pulls off real comedy, they're bending space, if you ask me. And that bending of space and time and the paradigm and the gestalt and the archetypes is a fucking miracle. And whenever it happens, people are like, 
holy shit, this is a pretty good universe, hurricanes, earthquakes, and all, and that makes people feel a little more excited about being alive, and that means that my friend's couch won't end up with a fucking rotting corpse <laughs> on it, somebody sucking back nitrous I, oxygen. I feel like we're just only, we're only a couple years away from when art and politics beautifully merge when we have Senator Kid Rock, for a guy that's really, because that's where... Can't wait. That's where I get back on board. Uh, we're there, great. People are great. We don't need them. That's the main thing. We don't need them. We're fine. We're going to be fine no matter what. This is fucking Harmontown. We're fine. <laughs> this was supposed to be a cult. What happened? Uh. We're going to be fucking fine. <laughs> well, we proved it last week. Dan told everyone to go fuck themselves and they're still here. That's exactly uh. what a cult leader does. Uh. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Next week, I start, I, start, I start revealing that I somehow need to sow the seeds of the... <laughs> And, it's, Let's do uh, it. and according to the to the book of, of uh, whatever I'm reading, uh, you know, it just shakes out that the you know the age of the girl has to be the, 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 okay. <laughs> what if like David Crash ten, was like, like, under what if, like ten, ten years from now? Because now that we're on like live stream and stuff like that, the, the shots of the audience, you just start noticing that everyone starts wearing the same color. <laughs> do it. We're, we're all wearing white outfits all of a sudden. And... Let's do it. Let's all wear white outfits and do nitrous oxide and move <laughs> to the next level of the show. Let's all get. Let's let's, let's build like, like we'll do a big art installation and we'll build the world's biggest van. <laughs> and we'll all get in that van. We'll all just start doing Great nitrous idea. together. Uh... <sighs> <laughs> yeah, I just uh, yeah. I mean, I'm no, I'm glad. I'm glad it all happened. Like, I'm a big piece of shit and a fucking blowhard. No, and I've been wrong about everything, and I it's good. It's good to start there. It's like a second childhood now. I'm like, oh man, I didn't know what any of that shit meant, you know? And it's good because like also another side of that thing that you're talking about, where comedians are like. It's good that comedians were basically like after the election they were like, look man, I, I can't. I, 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 what, what do you mean get back to work? Get back to work doing what? I, like, my, my, what I was doing before was, and, and, and then, but then as they're explaining that and having to defend themselves, I, I can't. For me, it was like there was this valve in my head where I was like, wait, what's the rest of that sentence? It's like because you need to acknowledge that what you're really saying is that you were kind of happy with the way society was before. You, you know, you did a lot of fucking complaining. <laughs> you, 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 you constantly acted like you were above everything. And, 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 that, and because that was like an easier way to, like, I don't know, it was just easier in general. It was easier to live that way, easier to be funny. And so now that's another good reason why this happened because I think comics are like, well, well wait, I, listen, I, I, my flow chart, it wasn't I woke up in the morning and uh, uh, looked at a newspaper, then put it out of my head and put my clown shoes on. My whole thing was that I lived in the world that we were living in together and also was entertaining you and was able to say whatever I wanted. Don't tell me to get back to work and ignore what's going on. But th there is like that interesting part. It's like, oh, because you, you weren't talking about politics before. Not that you should have, but it's like interesting then to retroactively go like, oh, geez, I guess I liked I, I liked my bipartisan fucking technocracy. I liked my oligarchy. I liked my I liked my thinly veiled or thickly veiled fascism. I liked my right. I liked my right of center. Uh, well, I'm uh, glad you admit uh, that. First world least. empire, where my toilet paper was soft yeah. because somehow indirectly it was it softened with Arab blood. You know, like it was a like oh man, this feels so extra it's good. Ne it's like never been proven. It's never been proven. It's a, somehow there's a way to prove it. I'm sure there was a time when. British colonists here were like, this is great. You know, we're paying a lot of taxes. This is, so, this is okay. Oh, man, can you imagine the fucking, like, arguments back then? Because it's like you were committing treason for real if you were yeah. patriotic. You yeah. Were, yeah, you were a terrorist. But you realize, like, it's like, okay, so, you, you know, you and I are the same age, which means that we have lived for our entire lives without the fear of the draft. So we've lived our entire lives with these kind of like uh, outrageous American wars that happen. American wars are really interesting because in most other places when there's a war, it's like an actual bar fight. You hit the person, they hit you back. An American war, we hit the person, they don't hit us back. And when they do hit us back, if they don't hit us back in a way that we've deemed the right way to hit us back, then we call them terrorists. So that's an American war. So. We've been living in a time period where every single city that we've lived in, thank God, has not been bombed. 
I guarantee you don't know what a bomb smells like. I sure as fuck don't. Don't fucking high road me. I'm gonna high road you, bitch! I grew up in Milwaukee. Uh, yeah, okay. That's like the Belfast of Wisconsin. <laughs> okay. okay, you know what a bomb smells like. You I... know what an M80 is? My friend Tony Schumacher almost took his thumb off. Just imagine a lot of M80s. That's what a bomb smells like. Well, the, the, all, you also probably don't know what it smells like. No, none of us know, thank God. Or, many, many of us don't know. I, I hope most of us, all of us don't know what, what it smells like when a bunch of people are on fire together. We don't know that. And that's an American war. We set people on fire. We blow them up. We disintegrate them. We're doing it for a very, very long time. So now what's happening is that shit's getting weird for us. And we don't want it to be weird because we don't want to get pushed into actual action. Yeah, exactly. That sucks. Yeah. But guess what? You've got to fucking do it, no. man. It doesn't, you got no. to. You have to. I'm old. I yeah, was yeah, almost yeah. retired. So was George Washington. He was a soldier when he was Why young. Yeah. He couldn't tell a lie. I can tell them. I. <laughs> I still have my teeth. I, 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 I just, I could, I could just slip. I'm almost 45. It's like a right age to just shut up and sneak away with your Trey Parker money and just fucking, just make your cartoon. Maybe you're write not a Broadway gonna do that, play. Man. You know, like you're fucking, not gonna do that with your money, man. You're gonna use that money for better things. And we're in like you're gonna, you're gonna use that money first of all to shelter all of us in some kind of beautiful compound I have $30,000 in my checking account. That is not a lie. I have spent all of my money on my shitty cartoon studio. Um, because, but I'm probably going to be a millionaire in a couple weeks. Because you know, it's just... It's... He looked at his watch. He looked at his... <laughs> He looked at his fucking Apple iWatch <laughs> because he has the stocks app. Come you on. In your calendar? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, my Tesla stock's going yeah. up. I don't have a car, but I invested in Tesla. Give him some credit. Cody's still got the Tesla stock. Oh, I should. I, wait, wait. Am I, is that illegal to, to tell? No, that's not no, insider well, trading. I'm not, I don't work at Tesla. I don't know. It's like, Co Cody's got Tesla stock. And she's like, because she's like, yeah, like, it, keep, it keeps going up. But she's like, she's like, it's like, it's weird when you have a stock that is like in something. Like, you hear all these, whatever. That's not How an many interesting stocks? topic. She, uh, three. I don't, what the fuck? I also, know. also, you guys, Cody, uh, Cody really likes Blue Bonnet at Santa Anita in the, uh, in the second race. <laughs> the, the, the Saturdays. Blue Bonnet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got the horse right here. The name is Paul Ruth. Uh, wait, what were we talking about? Fuck, I'm sorry. Guys and I, I, I Fucking revolution, baby. We're talking about revolution. We're talking about the idea that at some point in history, whether you like it or not, things change. This is like, if it, it's no point in being ahistoric. If you look at history itself, inevitably, black plagues, World War II's, World War I's, Vietnam's, Things happen, shit changes, and when shit changes, then it, it's up to us, the people, to do something about it and to not be so decimated by the reality of history, which is that sometimes bad people get into office and do rotten fucking things, and our job is not to pay attention to whatever the current laws of the land are. Our job is to get a fucking catering license and to buy <laughs> fucking as much nitrous oxide as we can, man. We gotta do it! And I would also add, I would also add, if you're still at this late date using toilet paper with Arab blood in it, stop doing that. You know, just, regular, do just get regular toilet paper. It doesn't, it doesn't really affect the wipe. <laughs> it just it just irritates our allies and our enemies abroad. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no, I mean, thank you. It's good. It's good of you to. This is a good time to 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 get this this boost. I mean, it's just all it is is it's like it's like you're running a marathon. Like we've never. We're, we're very lucky, and realizing that That's we're right. lucky is is exhausting. That's how lucky we are. The, the, it's strenuous realizing yeah. how lucky we are. That's like hard work. Right. It's like it's like when I when I do a little uh, dance when I rap, and then I'm like uh, two days later, I'm like out of breath, and my doctor's like, "What have you done?" Um, it's 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 like it's like you got to start somewhere, and somewhere is like holy yeah. shit, my whole. But it's like, and that's what it is. It's like it's been nine, it's almost been a year. And it's like, we're, like I, I, no, not everybody's hitting exhaustion points at the same time. I just like, it's like, I'm just pulling in, I pulled into the Twitter pit stop 
thing and was like, I'm doing something wrong out there. Uh-huh. Like I, I'm not because I'm not really doing anything to check. I, 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 I'm, I'm getting angry and I'm like, I, for all I know, on some chart somewhere, I'm like actually helping the bad guy because I'm just sort of like driving no, really not. angry and like screaming around. But it's just, it doesn't it doesn't hurt that much to pull over for a second no. and go like, okay, why am I out there? What am I doing? Change right. the tires. Go back out there with a fucking monster car. You know, yeah. like, 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 like some crazy monster mobile or something that's like you, you assembled because you like thought about it for a second. Right. Um, and, and that uh, no promises there. I'll probably just go back and promote Rick and Morty. But but uh, um, hey, I mean, you that's know, fine too. If a guy like me gets really rich, you know, I can always be one of those like Casablanca guys. that's like funding stuff uh, under the table or something. Lots of people do that, man. Like uh, the uh, like this venue could be like the you know like a, some kind of like uh, like Rick's like, Cafe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I, I could just be like, come on, don't I don't do nothing. You leave me alone, you Nazi goofs. Well, the the. Uh, <laughs> And then, and then, like, a comic goes up and goes, like, fuck, I don't think you should burn people because they're not white. And then they're like, what? Do, how do you explain this observation comedy? <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Reggie Watts does what he's going to do. He's just... Uh, That's hilarious. He thinks off the top of his head. Uh, guys, do you think they give me a script beforehand? Uh, why don't you I I feel, a tonic? Pardon me, Mr. Harmon. I, I find your impression of Humphrey Bogart a little, a little, <laughs> a little too New York Jew. <laughs> I, mean, like, I, I kind of sound like that Nazi from the Vice video. <laughs> it's like, man, the Jews, hey, I got a bunch of Jews. <laughs> Except for a son of a lot of Jew, I got the Jews and the blacks. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what was that guy doing? He sounded like Bob Hope. All right. Sorry, what, what, what were you? I was going to say that uh, you guys know Dr. Bronner's soap, right? Yeah. So, yeah, what's really cool about them... It's made of Arabs. Dr. Dr. Bronger Stoke? The soap. Yeah. Dr. The soap. Dr. Bronger Soap? The shit they sell at, like... The soap that has, like a, like, a political treatise written on the back of it. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, well, I don't know nothing about this, but continue. It's fascinating. The story's fascinating. So, like, Dr. Bronner, Emanuel Bronner, his entire family died in, in the Holocaust. And he came to the United States, and uh, he, um, he, like, had this, like vision basically he had this like message that he wanted to send and he was like writing i guess little pamphlets that he was trying to sp- give to people but he was also making soap and everybody wanted the soap but nobody wanted the fucking pamphlet with the weird <laughs> shit written on it so he realized oh i'll just put the fucking the the things that yeah. i'm saying on the it's awesome on the soap it's pretty awesome so what's interesting about that family the bronner's family is they put salary caps on themselves and then they give everything over that salary cap. All right, I don't like where this is going. Where? Where? It's cool. I have thirty thousand dollars in my checking account. I'm forty-four years old. I get, will you. D- so you're d- saying that you're getting like thirty thousand dollars? That's where you're at. Where's all your? I'm saying when there's a million dollars in that account, I'm not going to put a cap on it what? yet. I want to see if it can be but too. You, you, just for a second. But you could. The point is, like, the moment you do start like figuring out ways to like. Uh, harness money energy and not using it just for yourself you can start doing shit like what they do is they give money to like psychedelic therapy they've given i think over a million dollars to the multidisciplinary association for psychedelic studies just to work on mdma with ptsd and they give money to all kinds of groups like that so the point is like one form of being revolutionary is actually using your talent to get a bunch of dough and then instead of keeping that money, giving that money to, to uh, yeah. implicitly subversive organizations that are going to like transform society in their own way. That's how you really would start creating cool ripples, you know? There's also... Give your money away, you pig! Tell him to give his money away, people! Don't have Take it yet. from him! I'll tweet his address. You can go to his house. He, he, he just told us in a week he's going to be a millionaire. So fucking, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I be one for a week then after that? Do you how know do you how have, long I've been you waiting? Have ni- you have 19 TV shows. How do you have $30,000? I'm paying for all of them. You think, what do you think? You think, you think when you go pitch a show and they say, we'll take it, they give you money? They take money. You have to go develop the show now. It's, it's a fucked up business, man. I, I, I did a really dumb thing opening a studio. It's like, it's like opening a restaurant. It's just like, like wait, what are, you, like, like, what are you doing? You don't see any other restaurants Shit. around here? What are you trying to be, Sony? You fucking moron. They owe people money. They're Sony. <laughs> The, 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 the studios report a loss every year. Uh, but yeah, but along the way, I've got hooked up with some cool people. Not hooked up in the millennial sense. I don't know. 
I've, I've met some cool people, and I, th I like to think like ca that there will be shows now coming that I'm excited about that maybe wouldn't have existed if I, if I didn't go put my big pumpkin on the table right. at TBS and go like, plus I'll be there. <laughs> Aren't you making that big Rick and Morty money? Isn't that isn't that a that's thing? What, well, that's, what, that's why I'm going to be a millionaire soon. Can I see your watch? <laughs> what do you have on there? What does it say? Even alert? Yeah. It's just a pentagram. Yeah. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> just keeps looking at a pentagram. What is that? A, a minute ago it was 9/11. Right. Uh, yeah. I was just saying. It also says 9/12. You're, you're one of those guests that they give the ultimate compliment to. They didn't. 9/11 came and they didn't say anything. They kind of did. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, we were making noise at the time. What kind of noise? Uh, cheer, general cheers. Oh. <sighs> general cheers. Right. Cor Corporal general Big Bang Theory. General cheers. Report for duty. Uh, uh, did I, did I? How's your testicle? You beat cancer. <laughs> Still gone. Do you still, you still have to go in every six months and like uh, and like make sure that no. it's not coming back or anything like that? No. So um, they eventually just go, you're free and clear, or do they just keep keep it lengthening? Well, you the... can make a decision about that, and you can make the decision based on statistics. So you can go in for a certain number of scans. You can go in for a bunch of scans. You can like go in for like as many as you want, and every scan you go go for, there's a you know they're they're looking at your body to see if the thing is like spreading, but. Um, so yeah, it's, at one point I realized like you know I don't want to just I just don't want to keep getting like fucking MRIs and CAT scans and stuff and and lung X-rays. You know I'm just gonna like see what happens and if I die uh, then I'm gonna die of that I guess. But right. so far I feel great and everything's fine. So awesome. if I kick the bucket, forgive me. I told I that to yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, mean, I think if you, if you kick the bucket, the general rule is you're forgiven. <laughs> yeah, not all the time, well, man. It's a not couple all the time. of people, yeah. They're like, yeah. Everyone just kind of spits and. <laughs> but you know what? The way cancer really fucked me up was uh, not the physical stuff. The physical stuff sucks. The way it, it fucks you up is it it teaches you about impermanence and like that's a really rough thing because it's like we live in a in a society that doesn't really understand impermanence and most people. I remember like before cancer. I'll go and look at my podcast before cancer, and I'll just think about the way I was before cancer, and it's awesome because you're like running around. You're like, <laughs> I'm fucking gonna live forever. <laughs> you're reading Ray Kurzweil. You're like, shit, man. I think I really might be one of the people who lived to be a thousand. <laughs> They're gonna turn yeah, rocks into yeah, computers in yeah, 2040. You believe it? So it's kind of what's really funny about fucking uh, cancer is it does the exact same thing to you that the IRS does to your bank account because like, where you're like everybody has a temporal bank account so like everybody has this like you guys all like, if you haven't like really like tasted death you probably have like a, a bank account filled with all these years <clears throat> and you run around acting like a fucking trust fund kid because you're right. like man i got this bank account it's fucking stocked with years you go to the atm you're like look at all those fucking years man that's <laughs> awesome i'm fucking got so many years and then uh when you get cancer you're like Oh, fuck. I might overdraft. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I owe 40 years. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and what that does to you is simultaneously obviously tragic, but one of the most beautiful gifts of all time. And uh, uh, because what it gives you is this like incredible connection with the now. Cause you're like, you realize like, oh my God, this big fucking lie about how long I think I'm gonna live or how right. long people think they're gonna live. This is just another fucking lie, man. They want you to believe you're gonna live to 70, 80 years. Because if you believe that and you're gonna start investing in like 401ks and responsible living and you're gonna be like, but really the reality of it is, is like lots of you aren't gonna live past tonight. And this is fucking <laughs> And there kidding. are no doors. That's a cheap joke. That's of course, a cheap there's joke. always my way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I watched a Jonestown documentary and I realized what they did wrong is they, 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 they didn't just have the... the they used Kool-Aid. Um, they didn't just have an open bar. Um, so, good night. 
Uh, <laughs> it would have been so much easier for him. You know, you hear those Jones Jones recordings, and you're like, dude, why didn't you just... Jesus, if you really want these people dead that bad, and you don't yeah. want to have to do this soft shoe. Yeah, like, just God, kill them. My God, yeah. he had to do so much explaining. He's like, come on, don't cry. It's going to be okay. The, the line come that, on, you're just dying, that's all. The line that gets to me, this is the line that gets to me. <laughs> mothers, 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 stop your children from crying. We are Whoa. merely crossing over to the other side. Them first. Yeah. Because they can't yeah. do you. Yeah, that's... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that is fucking insane. I, yeah, it's a, uh, that, well, I, uh, uh, I know somebody who's, uh, wait, who was I just talking to who's like working on a Jonestown thing and like, uh, God, now my mind is such a fucking fart. Uh, anyways, but but yeah, if there, there's docu, I mean, like I, I, well, I'm not recommending you go to a, like a horrible grim place, but it's about, I, I guess you know what? It, it, watch the Ken Burns Vietnam thing too, because I'm going to because that's one of the things too is like not to normalize what's happening now, but it actually is a little uplifting to to remember or rather know. I was a little child in 19. I was a baby in 1973. So, but, but it's like they they were fucking like there's a lot of parallels like just in terms of the national psyche. Like they kind sure. of they they you people back then were as groovy as they were because they too like us felt like every day could be the last day. That's right. uh, of America, and they really felt that that's what was at stake. They had a lot of reasons to feel that way. They, 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 and uh, yeah, and, and uh, I just watched Network again too, which is taking place at that time, and uh, it's. it's their ne network jokes. is kind of a, a gay romp. Like, it's like, it's like, <laughs> like the jokes that they're doing in the background about how you know President Ford's life has been threatened by this or that. Just, they're, they're kind of like they're, they're just setting the time in places. It's like, oh God, yeah, we were the '70s were like a crazy time. Sure, it's not. It's not to say that it's not to normalize. It's just, it, feel a sisterhood with the '70s. Watch the Ken Burns thing, or watch that. There's a great documentary on the Weather Underground that you should watch. It's really fucking cool. And these these guys, they're uh, yeah. You know what else you should watch? Watch uh, Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> something by Jane Austen or something. No, they're... they're, they're <laughs> you guys are dumb. You guys you're, aren't you're not dumb. watching stuff that you're you should watch. Dumb. What were you watching? You know, Guardians 2. Yeah. <laughs> Jane Austen didn't write it. I, like, I, I finally saw Guardians 2. I really liked it. Was it good? Because I, I famously kind of—I think I may have let it slip, and I'm, I was—I I didn't get the—I didn't get the fucking hysteria about Guardians One. But when, I liked and, so, it. and so I put off watching Guardians Two for a long time because I was like, these people are nuts about the Guardians thing. And so I'll just—I don't want to watch the sequel because I felt like there were just so many purple people yelling, and like I couldn't tell the difference between any of the characters. I thought, like Rocket Sounds Raccoon. Sounds like DMT. Rocket Raccoon deserves more than to have a camera push on him and then say yeah. Like, like, like that's not—that's not clever. Like the camera pushes and you, you don't—you you say more than yeah. And, and so I was like, I, didn't, I wasn't—I wasn't like—I was like, I don't get this. This movie isn't like Citizen yeah. Kane. But then, so, so I watched the second one. I was like, "Oh man, I love this Drax guy. He's so great! Like, I love this raccoon." I was, I was like, "This is really cool." Wasn't was like, Steve Agee in the second one? Yeah, yeah, he That's was. Which cool, I forgot, man. and then all of a sudden, Steve Agee's That's just so like, badass. Yeah, amazing, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. That's what. That's a guy. If the apocalypse needed to happen for Steve Agee to be in Marvel movies. Yeah. Fine, I'll take I'd it. I'd love to be around Steve Agee in yeah. the apocalypse. I want Steve Agee to be in every Marvel movie from now on. I, I hope so. He looked great. I haven't seen it yet, but like the stills I've seen, he looks fucking awesome. Yeah, no, he fit. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's a little space pirate. Oh, but the weather underground, not to be, <laughs> not to be like too preachy or something, but like definitely check it out because it's cool because there's the weather underground. Like Obama would actually get in trouble because he was friends with one of the members, but their motto was bring the war back home. So... They, they they actually decided that they were going to start blowing up buildings, and they did. And the way they did it is they would call the building and make sure no one was there because they didn't want them to get killed. But uh, it, it was an example of an American revolutionary movement that was, like, maybe a little fueled by psychedelics. Like, there's just, like, in the documentary, they talk about being in their van. No nitrous, but, like, Here fucking... Here we go again. <laughs> Like, just being in the van, they're all, like, having an orgy in a van as they're driving to, like, put explosives in a government building to blow up to protest the Vietnam War. And when you look at that, and, and, and we're, like, just throw your moral compass away, but just when you look at that, you realize how great people really are. Because, <laughs> we really, because you realize, like, these, these people don't need to do that. They could just fucking ignore the Vietnam War like anybody else. They could just ignore it, ignore it, go to your job. We're all doing fine, man. 
We're fine. You guys have money. I don't know how much you have. You have a little bit. You're not starving. We're fine. So it's easy to ignore, which is what they want. So it's kind of cool when people are like, fuck this. We're not ignoring anymore. And then they go to this extreme place, which I'm obviously not advocating in any way. But still, it represents what can be done. And it's a really inspirational thing to watch because you realize, like, shit, man, we could be doing a lot more than we're doing. You know, we can be doing lots, lots more. And if we all start doing lots... You can also build a birdhouse. You don't have to blow anything up. <laughs> you can blow up a birdhouse. There were a lot less people in the world back then. There was probably an easier... In the it, Vietnam it, War? It was easier to blow up a building with no one in it. Uh, I would say these days... I'm not saying blow up buildings. I'm not advocating, like, that level of violence. But And also, like, in the, and I, I will admit this, like, when the Antifa started punching people, I was definitely, like, having conversations like, you know, I think they've gone too far. <laughs> But like one of the things, then I started like researching them a little bit, and this will get me in trouble on the internet because anytime you like do any kind of like emphasis on like maybe they're not so bad, you you will immediately get like a bunch of tweets like you fucking idiot. Do you know what you've done? Oh good, but, well like, I'm not on Twitter. Maybe Antifa is not so bad. Like uh, very happy to say that. Well, one of the cool things that they one of, oh maybe some of them are here. <laughs> one, one, one of the cool things that they say, or one of the cool you know, so people break windows in these protests, and they break these windows, and people are like how could you break windows of local businesses? And Antifa, they call those people window protectors. <laughs> They're like, oh, you want to protect windows? That's what you're worried about, fucking windows? Maybe we could form an alliance at some point. Yeah, In yeah. my world, all the windows are going to break. Yes, exactly. Uh, and so the ones that aren't broken will be polished by Nazis, so I'm breaking a couple windows to yeah. get you talking, or whatever. I'm not going to justify their stuff. I'm so, I'm just, as I said on your podcast, uh, I'm just so fucking grateful that like that not all kids are just like it, it, it's like, like, like that, that some of them all kids are hooligans right so I fucking like I'm so grateful to my hooligan kids who are like I'm gonna be a hooligan today yeah what, what, how, what, how do I where do I direct my hooliganism like towards fucking like like towards the man Dude's towards, pro Nazi towards Nazis like I'm gonna fucking like like, yeah, I'm sorry, like if they didn't do that then we'd be extra fucked like and, and, I'm, and, I'm definitely gonna complain about them last like, complain like, about like, them last and I will admit man I did complain about them in the beginning anybody in the, in the Antifa listening I'm sorry they don't forgive so well, I guess they're gonna hate me <laughs> but like the uh, the um, I want to have somebody from Antifa it's someone from Antifa I think isn't that isn't that kind of a silly thing is it, is it like they're not like a they don't have like a letterhead I think right? they're decentralized we've so got like, somebody from Antifa here they're Steve Levy right? the stage Steve Levy <laughs> come on up here are you serious one of the uh, he's the spokesman from the Burbank <laughs> chapter of Antifa. I want to have also just for anybody, anybody listening who cares about this stuff, like who's like like what, the platform and all this stuff and how you're using it. I want I had you know I had Gotham Girl uh, come on. She's she's an Eleanor Democrat. She talked about believing in the system and the election was uh, fraudulent. We might we you know there's like like she uh, like, like I I wanted her to have her signal boosted for that reason. I also want to have therefore somebody from the DSA. People have been tweeting me and stuff and and somebody from from Antifa and like you guys have always been so kind to yeah, like 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 that that that's I want to like sprinkle those folks in because it's like turbulent times and and I just wanted to say that out loud so you didn't think that I was like I don't know biased like, well that I well that, that I'm, I don't care if I'm bi I don't, biased I don't know anything I don't know enough I want to have people on that talk about like what to do because I like I don't I don't know what to do so I, I want to talk to the people that are like I don't care if they're doing like shit that's like ugly whatever I want to talk to them all right anyways what 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 what, <laughs> what? nothing how you doing how you doing Levy how's, how's things things are good yeah? Yeah. Last time I saw you a couple weeks ago, you were a little down in the dumps. Yeah. You know, it happens. Why? <laughs> now, why do people get down in the dumps? What happened? Oh, I, I, I guess I, I have my heart broken. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's the worst. There we go. Here we go again. <laughs> oh, boy. I guess I had my heart broken. Can you talk about what happened? <laughs> we, uh, yeah. Well, you know uh, hearts? Uh... <sighs> <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, an old friend of mine. We, we, you know, we started seeing each other for the first time, really, and uh, trying to make it work. She lives in New York, and um, we were, you know, seeing each other back and forth for a little bit. And then the last time I saw her, it was 
we we, we parted ways. Because yeah. you guys you guys went there after a lifetime of childhood sweethearty yeah fox and the hound shit. I guess it, as you would say, we had a real will they won't they right. <laughs> And, yeah, and and then the, now the question is, yeah, it has been answered, and it's won't they won't. You don't know that things change. Well, no, see, I do know. I mean, that's what he's seeing happen. I, I'm not. I'm not trying to. I, yeah, I will. After all those years, it was. I, I guess they will, and now they won't. Right. Well, they 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 did. They did. They, they, they did. did. Oh. And now they won't they, again. Now they, right. now they, they don't. Didn't. <laughs> Wait, no. Now it's a question. Now it's more of a did they don't they. No, they didn't. They did. Now they're not, but they might again. Now, and, is and, there is there a might they could they or not? I, I don't know. And I don't want to. This is a, I'm a totally unbiased objective observer. I have no agenda about like setting you up or wingmanning you or anything. I just I heard through the grapevine that the reason it didn't work, she complained about something like like uh, it, you, your your penis was naturally ribbed and. Uh, yeah, I heard that too. And S giant. And then it was not. It's, it was self lubricating. Yeah. And, and, no, what and, I. And it, and, it, and, it, and it, yeah, it vibrated. That's what I heard. I heard this uh, crazy thing like you can't control it, how fast it vibrates. Like she didn't like that it had. It also, a, it also had a little prong that came out, which is right, right on the clip. Yeah. Is that true? It, it, yeah. It's a curse. It's shaped like it's a, a rabbit. Curse. Yeah. That's brutal. right on the top. There was like a yeah. there, right on the back of the helmet. There's like a <laughs> like, like a pair of rabbit ears that like come yeah. out and yeah. go like that. You got a crazy cock, man. <laughs> a little too crazy for some unlucky yeah. woman. Yeah. Uh, some but women aren't ready for. Is... <laughs> some girls aren't ready for the perfect cock. Is what, 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 what we're finding out. <laughs> and your and your your didn't your dick just come back from Texas where it was helping move sandbags for flood victims? I thought it was Puerto Rico. With with, with, with Ryan Gosling and. Uh, I thought the problem was yes. whenever there was a disaster yes. in the world, your his, cock would detach his, his, and fly to the disaster. His balls are, are right now are restoring cell service in Puerto Rico. Oh, can I? Ask, I want to say I, I had it. I, 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 I made up. Look, I, ha, <laughs> I, I have a cum question. Like, I, I, I was like, like, yes. I was like, don't you think? I was telling Cody because I was like hungover. I'm not going to share my. I, 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 like, you, you guys don't want to picture me having sex, but I was like, there, I was having this conversation where I was like, I, I just, I, I made some observation where I was like, because I was, I was like. <laughs> I was like, don't you think it takes a lot of water to to result in a load of cum? I, like, like, like it dehydrates like, 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 you. And she was like, "What are you talking about?" It's like it's as much water as there is. Cum. I'm like, "No, it's not like a recipe. You don't like put a little bit of your body doesn't put a little bit of water in a in a in in, in your balls and then put a little bit of of sperm powder and like it's like like there's a process like and don't you don't you think it takes a certain amount of water and a certain amount of sandwiches? Like how many? How, how, like, what do you think? Like, in a load of a load of of, of ejaculate, uh, uh, like, which is like, I think it's like five a hundred million sperm are in a in an ejaculate. So there's I, this whole process that you you know the sperm. I just read it's 1.2 terabytes of data. <laughs> <laughs> wait, shut up! Wait, wait you're, I, you're, you're, I actually did see this. Wait, too. wait, wait! You mean genetically? Like, yeah, uh, genetically, the DNA in a sperm equals. I, I it was like wrong. one sperm is equivalent to 35 megabytes. I don't know if it's, it's real. Wait, that's insane. Wait, terabyte. One sperm is half the information it takes to make a person. How much? How much? How much data is what? in a person's DNA? It's expected to be more than 1.2 terabytes. It's amazing that it's just 1.2 terabytes. Doesn't that imply that a, hu a full human being is 2.4 terabytes? No, it implies when you're downloading stuff into your computer, it's having an orgasm. Sorry. Say what? <laughs> what is? We, we, have a, we, have a, we have either a computer science major or, or a chronic masturbator. Uh, <laughs> the two can happen together. Uh, I don't know which it could be. The two can happen at once, Dan. <laughs> it's impossible for it to be both. Uh, you say, you, what, you say, you're saying it's 124 terabytes. Are you correcting the data? Of 124 the, of the sperm? terabytes? Just so you know, I did my uh, doctoral thesis on college cum, and it's... <laughs> 1.2. Okay, well, so, uh, yeah, well, that's, got, I mean, that really is, like, we're coming up on the, I mean, because the, uh, they're coming up on the, like, we're getting, so we're getting close to, like, you know, well, wait, well, we have peta, what is it, peta, petabytes is next, like, the, that's yeah. the next highest thing. 
We, we, we obviously we have the whatever we've mapped the human genome. I'm like, what am I, my grandpa? I just say, like like pretty soon teleportation, man. Once you can store everything, I don't know? teleportation's bad news, man. You know about like <laughs> once that, you teleport, you're dead. You know. Right? I mean that philosophical thing. Yeah, of the, that's yeah. true though. <laughs> Because, like, you, you can't you know prove that? it. I can't prove it's me. Yeah. Let me ask you this. If, if you could, if you could pick, but like, so you got to fly across the country. And if you could pick teleportation, but you've got to get kicked in the balls. <laughs> or, like, flying on an airplane, what do you pick? I never want to teleport because it'll it'd be, that's like at, going in a suicide booth. You, it kills you. That'll be the amazing thing when they invent teleportation. Eventually, there will be a society. I think will be dead, but it, there will be this like concept of like virgins. You know, people who haven't been teleported. That's right. And people will start saying like, like "Oh, you should talk to Gary." When Gary talks, you can kind of sense that he was he's using the cells that he was born yeah, with. Yeah, because we can't even fucking print. <laughs> I only date teleporters. Black and white ink. We can't print anything without fucking errors. You think we can print people back out of a fucking? Not teleport? yet. You can't even copy. A fucking JPEG. No, we'll be so fucked. Yeah, yeah, and for that's sure. Your brain, it's like you come out and you know, like I don't know Spanish anymore, and yep. it's like that's if you're lucky. Like you'll yeah. we'll be and you, so and, and, fucked. And you know who's gonna say you never knew Spanish? The fucking dipshit that works behind the teleport yeah. booth that's teleported himself a million times a day, and he's just like, no, it's great. But you're assuming the mechanism of teleportation is based on the disintegration, reintegration of the human like atomic structure. What if it's some kind of like, like wormhole te tesseract? What if it's some kind of wrinkle no, in time with, shit? I'm down with that. So yeah, it's cool. <laughs> it's got teleporting. That's what's scary. Yeah, no, I mean I know the Oh portals like walking through a door yeah, into different. another place. Yeah, that's great. That's safer. Yeah, hook but me up. Have you yeah. read Ring World? No, no. It's great. But Ring World's super cool because it's like Larry Niven, and it's like way in the fucking future. But in this world, there is teleportation. I don't know if it's like bending the time space continuum or like destroying your atomic self and reintegrating it or whatever. But what's interesting about it is like there's no such thing as like any one city. All cities have become one massive city because there's no longer any kind of like distance between cities. So what happens on this like like super futuristic earth which is really cool is it and also they've gotten to the level where they can like change their skin pigment so suddenly the fashions on the planet change like day to day because everyone's so super connected so like one day people will just start glowing or like certain like star patterns will appear in people's faces and stuff because they become so interconnected that like I guess I'm pity I just keep saying I mean, like come on that's not imaginative <laughs> What the fuck, Carmen? Yeah, no, I'm listening. I'm like, oh, yeah, well, cities get bigger, and then they all turn into one big city. Did you think of it? And then everybody can change their skin? I'm like, Did you come think on. That's of, like, you didn't think of it? Well, I, d I didn't bother. <laughs> Wait a minute. I was thinking I, of crazy I, shit, man. I love you. I was you. like, what if a sandwich could make your cum? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, man, when you were talking about that, it was really funny because I kept thinking of like an awesome cooking show. Right. You, you got hungry. Where is it's what you're God, saying. where God's like, today we're gonna be whipping up just basic cum. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make three club sandwiches, two gallons of water. We're gonna put it into Tyler, yeah. and uh, and we're gonna wait 20 days I, I, on a very special episode of Chop Junior. <laughs> But that's all I'm saying is that, like, you know, you have to take in all this. We were talking about the biological process, spermatogenesis. Yeah. By the way, I learned also, I, I started doing, yeah, I don't know. I started doing this thing where I'm, like, researching cum a lot. I, 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 it was, I, 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 it's like, like, after I masturbate and or have sex uh, and or intentional, like, I, sex with me is weird. Uh, but I thought, like, like, sometimes you're laying there and you're like, man, I don't know if I'll ever get out of bed. And then that's why I, like, I, like, I get out my iPad and I'm like, all right, tell me how sperm is made, because then I think like if I watch it, then I'll like maybe I, the sperm will start getting made, and then I can get out, get out of bed. Wait, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, wait. but like I'm, you know, like, you, you, your your mobility is sperm based. Well, I don't know. I'm like a caveman. Like when sperm. I'm in that mode, I'm like I'm like I don't know. Uh, so the only the only scientific thing that I know is different is that I came a bunch, and now I can't get out of bed. 
So I think, look, I, I knew somebody, I knew somebody who worked in porn, and they were on a set when Peter North like finished a scene, and then he finished. Peter North, who's like famous for coming a bunch, um, he he finished coming, and then and then he like fin and I was like, so what does he what does he do after he finishes? I asked the person like, you were you were you watched Peter North come, like what happens after? And, and, and he and, has and, four pina coladas. And he, he said he said Peter North he turns into a little boy and he goes like, oh man, I need some cereal. Wow, that's awesome! It's just—it's so Dirk Diggler, oh, like so it's, it's like, like, like he just like he's like he's like Jethro Bodine, like he just he, 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 but but who are we gonna trust if not him? Like a, some kind of comologist? Like maybe Peter North is maybe he's just joyfully wrong, but maybe he's like expertly right. He's just like eating fucking frosted mini wheats and milk because it kind of reminds him of cum when he looks at it. <laughs> it's like that must make cum. Wait. <laughs> I so, gotta so, come so, more later. So somebody told me it was Golden Grams that that was his thing. He, he liked Golden Grams cereal. Yeah, I mean that, that, that makes that, sense. That, that was that was his Popeye's spinach. That. <laughs> I love the idea that it's just based on the milk, but I swear, like, sometimes, you know, when you come a lot, don't you, sometimes you go, like, man, I kind of, this has been great, I love this feeling, but also, like, can I get some motivation back? Can I start living sure. in denial again? Can I, what do I got to do to do that? And you think, like, well, the refractory period must be based on, like, your balls start, I just have to assume that your balls start making, I don't know. You know the idea about the refractory period? It's really, really, you had Chris Ryan on the show before, yeah, the yeah. author of Sex and Dawn. So one of the ideas about the refractory period is that from an evolutionary perspective, it's better for a woman to have multiple mates. So the I right. so like because then the strongest sperm is gonna that's so survive. Up. That's why I don't watch rom coms. That, that's the <laughs> because there's like that 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 height of romance. But yeah, I know it's probably true though because it's right. like it's like they, they, I've read stuff. You're like making ship, love ship, ship to your lover where... in the primordial past. You're making love. You come inside of her. You're like I love you. I'm gonna go to bed. And then you like start going to bed, and then your friend is like, "Can I start fucking her now?" And, and, you're, she, and either you're like, "Yeah, man," more than or there, she's or, like, "Yeah, let's do it," or, or, or not. Or, or she's but the idea is like, out. "Yeah, this this so the idea is the refractory period is actually designed to make sure that a because uh, so the question Wait, is, so like, what was that? Why, why, why can women why, have why multiple mul orgasms? Why are in a multiple man? mates important though? Why, what what does that? So the idea is like, if you had some kind of like, I don't know, something was going on with you, and you weren't like. Making like powerful loads, whatever that may be. In you know a crazy, I mean? like, what if? Yeah. What is but the question is like, why, why, why would it be? The, the, the big question. It's like a Golden Graham shortage. I, I go, I go away for two weeks. I come back to the Jizz Show. <laughs> I love talking about cum. But the question. <laughs> I really do. You gotta go on Cum Town. Uh, <laughs> Coming yeah, Town. To. The question is. <laughs> A, a woman can have multiple orgasms with a... I That's think... not true. That's not true. <laughs> That's a myth. We'll be right back. That's us. Awesome. You hear it all the time, but it's not true. It's something they're saying. They were talking about it at the Wonder Woman premiere, but you couldn't get in. It's not true, and it's not fair. Not right, true. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, you're right. It's not true. No, come on, no, what do you, you come on, finish your thought, finish your thought, I'm sorry. I, no, I mean, the idea is like, the, the question is just like, why would it be that a man has like this really intense reaction to orgasm, right. re, which we call the refractory period, whereas a woman can have multiple orgasms, and the implication, according to Chris Ryan, is that, well, th this is clearly like created f with the idea of like a multiplicity of level. Right. Levers. Well, but Chris, I mean, that's a, that's the, what's interesting about Chris Ryan because he's a well-needed like update to Desmond Morris, who's in the '60s. But Desmond Morris's theory about that was that, and the, but I don't want to be part of a patriarchy. Uh, <laughs> but but the, the, the Desmond Morris theory was that yeah, men, men fall asleep because then you bond emotionally with your lover. Bullshit. Well, but there's a but but here's the thing. There's it's a because we get sleep. But, but there is there is a scientifically like it's, it it goes back to it, it it all has to do with human babies being more biologically vulnerable than tiger babies, deer babies, and like, cactus I babies. I don't know, but I mean I don't know. I think like Chris Ryan makes it's a pretty probably great that's why argument. I don't want to. That's why I just claim the fuck out of it. But yeah. I do think that this delight. I really prefer the Desmond Morris theory. Like all the biological quirks about us are all designed for pair bonding because our babies need two parents. Well, you can still pair bond. I mean, like it's not you can't 
the idea isn't that you, by the way, I'm like severely embarrassingly monogamous, so don't get me wrong. I'm not some kind of like, just got back from Burning Man, Dan, and now I've learned we gotta be non-monogamous. Your girlfriend's pretty. I'm not like that. Don't worry, man, that's not fucking happening. I'm severely, desperately, in, based on insecurity, completely fucking monogamous. So, but, so don't get me wrong, but like from a, a, a perspective of like, yeah, like the, the, like the idea kind of would be, and again, this is not my idea. Like I couldn't do this, but the idea would be if you really love somebody, wouldn't you want them to come a lot? No, not with you. <laughs> Dan, I'd have to love you and not them. Dan, <laughs> Dan if, you, if, you, if you really love Cody, let Duncan fuck him tonight, man. <laughs> listen, man. Listen, I didn't say also, it, listen, we're, we're I didn't sit, say you, it like that. We're sitting right next to, to Steve Perfect Cock Levy right. over here. <laughs> let her have a good sa Saturday night. It's Saturday night. <laughs> let her live a little. Oh, my. Look, I don't... I don't want to forbid Steve and Duncan to fuck Cody. <laughs> now you're talking! I want Cody to not want that. Right. It's, well, no, it's, again, it's, and, and, and I made a dumb old... joke. Wait, let me just say this very quickly. I just made a stupid, dumb joke. I don't mean that at all. What, I, what I'm saying is it's like, uh, from my POV in the society that I was born into, because of my own levels of insecurity and where I'm at in my life, I want to be monogamous and I will continue to be monogamous. I'm not changing that. Right. That's me. That's who I am. I've always been like that. I can't change it. But if you look like, if you like zoom out right. and you look at like what evolution wants, right. And then you realize monogamy itself is a cultural, it's like a new imposition. It, it, well, it dovetails with this whole thing about anarchy versus capitalism. Cause it's like, what I'm saying, it's like, Oh, you know what? I'm a, I, I get to pretend I was born into this stainless steel concrete jungle and that, hey, it wasn't my idea to do this, but hey, will you be my girlfriend and all that stuff. At the same time as I'm like, hey, it wasn't my idea to have the American dollar be the standard of the entire planet. Like, like but hey, what are you going to do? And, and then, but then push comes to shove as in cultural upheaval and right now capitalistically we're going like, yeah, again, but though theoretically anarchy is the, like. Not theoretic. It's not, it's not the more popular way to do it, but it is the way that we, like like we would uh, and 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 I think you're saying the same thing about p polyamory or whatever they call it these these kids um, you could just if you go to the bathroom here it's disgusting <laughs> okay <What is> it? <laughs> it was a joke or maybe not I, I I have a special bathroom upstairs it's rhinestones and just uh, 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 the, all, the, all the cultists' daughters. Um, the, 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 but, but yeah, I mean, I, th I think you're saying the same thing I am, which is yeah. like theoretically, intellectually, not wanting to be guilty of dishonesty, one should acknowledge it. Yeah, right. probably there's like a there's a freer humankind yeah. that functions That's better and healthier. It, but then also, it's important then to go just as I did before I quit smoking, where I was like, I like smoking. Like my therapist says, awareness, acceptance change people skip acceptance like right. you know, like oh i'm aware i'm a, i'm i'm doing this i like i, I should I'm, I'm gonna stop doing it and uh, and, then, and then you're like and then you just ping pong back and forth that's why i don't quit drinking i have to accept it first i've become aware i drink a lot i'm still working on accepting it <laughs> then i'll change it later i've seen you accept a lot of drinks <laughs> me too especially especially <laughs> Uh, yeah, but that guy with the well, oh, it's all one big city. Come Speaking on, of drinks, not, we, we, we never shot him out. Matt, well, the bartender over here. Matt, our bartender. Yeah, give a big tip. Tr truly, the hardest working person in Harmontown. All right, well, keeping I, I, these bunch of fucking reprobates happy. I apologize to Spencer. I know he's going to say he doesn't give a fuck, but but like that's because he's my son. But uh, they, what? They, yeah, whatever. We'll talk about it later. But. but <laughs> Yeah, all these it. jokes about fucking my mom, all of a sudden a line. And my fascination would come. <laughs> right. My, my, my yeah, I always just sandwiches. wrote off your fascination with cum as normal. <laughs> uh, but in but perspective. I just, I, 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 Duncan was making me feel better, so I, 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 yes. I, I, kept, I kept, I kept him in my mouth like one of those, uh, uh, um, ring pops. Like one of those Levy cocks. <laughs> <laughs> one of those delicious... Oh, 
it's like a, you know what? It's not that. Why am I? Why am I making the diameter? No, it's like a it's like a nice broomstick diameter, and it's like it's gentle but firm, and it's there when you need it. And if you get thirsty afterwards, it gets you a glass of water without you asking. Whoa! So How you can make also come. Please. Steve Levy's dick does something that almost no other dick does in the morning. It makes you the best avocado toast you've ever fucking had. <laughs> Wild. It's a little yes, basil, wild. a little feta on it, some little olive oil. Fucking perfect. That's I why did get an argument. I got in an argument with his dick, though. Oh, no. Because I said to it, this is just a sandwich, man. Are you... Avocado toast is just a sandwich. All but... right, forget it. That's for another podcast. <laughs> uh, well, let's, uh, let, let Duncan know you want him to come back by, by thanking him with your hands. Thank you, Duncan. Oh. Duncan Trussell. I feel like uh, he he just makes everything a little bit better, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, he does. He's, he's, yeah, he's like just he's like uh, he's like walking serotonin. All right, I, why don't you marry him? He's probably back there fucking my girlfriend. <laughs> In the beginning of that rant, I thought you were gonna say you wanted like it just sounded like you're going towards you wanted like an in incremental cum clicker, like cookie collector, where like you get the inner oh, workings of the like, and you'd like manufacture your own sperm and you, finally like, you'd have an understanding loads, of like yeah, like like I, I, know. I, I swear to god, I really am fat. Stop I'm not, saying loads. I'm not I'm well, I don't know what to ejaculate batches. I don't what yes. there is no Quanta. the language fails. Like I, I it is a truly fascinating thing that as as mammals we like we take in energy and then we have a little factory uh, that, that has to dangle between our legs because it requires like a degree cooler environment just for the just for the chemical process of making them, not storing them. Once they're made, they're fine in summer, you know, whatever. Like but, but they're they gotta get made one degree cooler and. and they're just like those little fucking missiles that are just loaded with the need to hit an egg and they're like simultaneously geniuses and idiots and there's they're just disposable and we're we're just constantly making them until the day they bury us but like women's eggs are like like they're finite and they're like they're they're giant like they're the size of the sun compared to a sperm's rocket and like it's just like this amazing i'm just so fascinated with all of it all right let's let's look I, like, I, I, I don't like, know whether we I, have enough time we we, we, we found we oh, found out well, okay well we, we should have, we should have no, came. it's fine. We have I'm time. Just, Come on. I don't know. Let's give the audience some D and D. We've only we'll, got. We started wait, wait, wait. a little late. I, we've only got like eleven. I, we've we, only got like eleven minutes tops. I, I, I promise. That's what I'm saying. We found out tonight Spencer's, that you love cum. Spencer's the game master. Like, 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 like <laughs> he makes the rule. Like, we can't, we can't announce cliffhanger endings and things like that. Spencer is in charge of the thing. So if he says, like, yeah, it's not. It's we not, should get Duncan back. <laughs> It's not, let's get, hey Duncan, are you back? I, Duncan, he come back. We, we, we're not going to play play D and D. What was that? I'll just pretend <laughs> to. Well, how about, how about this, Spencer? Uh, because I was I was not here. Let's just let's just recap. So we we, we uh, Duncan's back. back. Oh shit! <laughs> Thank you for having me back. He, it's an encore. He you fucked all of our girlfriends that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is a really long time for me. That's, wow. that's part of his appeal. That's how he gets them. Hey, man, this won't take a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to put you out, man. Yeah. The, the I'm thing glad is, you they, brought they, me back. I got a cheesy thing to say. Uh oh. To cut off whatever you were going to say, which is probably the it was, it, it was, it was going to be trenchant and hilarious, but go ahead. <laughs> oh, no. Levy, I had to tell you this thing. Okay. <laughs> Because, like, you know Jack Cornfield, the Buddhist teacher? You no. Know <laughs> you don't know Jack Cornfield? <laughs> he owes me 10 bucks. He's not here, right? So he tells this great story. And guaranteed, the thing about having a broken heart, guaranteed there's a bunch of people here right now who have a fucking broken heart, because that's what it means to be human. But there's a... Uh, Jack Cornfield talks about how uh, there's a story in Judaism where there was a rabbi that made his students hold the tef, you know teflon, you know what that is? Yeah. Tefillin? Tefillin, yeah. Tefillin. Eggs don't stick to it. <laughs> NASA, NASA invented it. Don't, 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 don't tell me the Jews made that. 
that was NASA. You're right, dude. It is one of the weird mysteries of the universe is the eggs don't stick to it. What is Tefalum? What? Do you, you remember Take that? Take it away, Steve. It's Wait. like the shit they cook. The shit they cook eggs. I on. know Teflon. What's Tefalum? What's the thing you're talking about? <laughs> No, do you, we, we talked about this, I think, yeah. earlier in the year. Remember, I got accosted in Beverly Hills by... Uh, oh, right. They put, yeah, a, they, put a, they put a Parker Brothers thing on your head. Yeah, that's like to fill in where they wrap it around your arms. Okay, they, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You saw it. The, the point is, like, inside this box are these scrolls. And, like, I don't know what's written on them, but there's something amazing written on them. But So Jack Cornfield tells a story how, like... Uh, I already know you're going to fucking make fun of this man. I know you're going to like, you got some already. But like Jack Kornfield has, tells his story. Is he a Jewish B Buddhist? He might be, He might have started off Jew Jewish and then became Buddhist. Like a lot of people that I learned from are, are like, they started off Jewish and they became like Buddhist or Hindu. But it doesn't, the whole thing is like, the whole like, because this those is robes. It, it's ridiculous saying what you already were. The point is. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. You, you know what, the, what a Jewish Buddhist says? What? <laughs> Oim. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Wait, did you, you didn't, you didn't, you heard that somewhere. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait, oh, uh, he, we, we, what if he heard that somewhere? What if he got that out of a Bazooka Joe? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oim. <laughs> did you did you just make that up? Yes. Oh, that's not fair. Hey, muscle tone. That's, that's not amazing. Oim. <laughs> Oim is the title. That's the title. O Y M. Is that what it would be? Let me warm my yeah. way out of this thing, please. No, no, no. So, so the idea is like this rabbi, it like makes his students hold the tef to fill in to fill in against yeah. their heart when they're when they're like saying prayers. And one of them said to him, why do you make us hold this against our heart when our, we're saying prayers? And he said, so that maybe when your heart breaks, the prayers will fall inside. That's cool, right? <laughs> That's, it's a nice thought. Yeah. So heart, heartbreak is a, yeah, it's a thing. It's a, it's like, a, yeah, it's a cr cr cracking and then like, like yeah, it's, it's like a crack an evolving that prayers thing, like fill. me on Twitter. Like, yeah, I'm like and broken. it doesn't stay open. It cracks like an egg and it falls on the tofu. No, it's like, <laughs> like, it's, like a, it's a sacred moat. The thing is like, if you get your fucking heart broken, which is a very rare occurrence in a human incarnation, it really doesn't happen all that much. But when you finally get your fucking heart broken, you are walking through the kingdom of heaven. Like you are in heaven right now. You don't realize it. You don't realize it because like everybody thinks heaven is like just like, you know, infinite blowjobs or what. I don't know what people think heaven yeah. is. But, that, but that's not what heaven is. <laughs> heaven is direct contact with reality. So right now you're having direct contact with eternity and, and that's a, like a holy moment. And so like you want the window shuts. That's what I'm saying, man. Like your heartbreak window, you probably got like another like, I don't know, 20 years and then you'll start su stop suffering. No, you probably have like I got I thought of something yeah, yeah, yeah. I can I can I can I can I can be I can be uh, I, I, I I can be smarter than than the, 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 this philosopher guy. I I I, 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 him. I can Don't beat talk him. shit about Jack Cornfield. Get off Twitter. No, I can beat him. I can beat him. Uh, you, 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 okay, so your heart, your heart, so your heart's broken. You know what else is broken? A baby's skull. You know why? So it can grow into an adult skull. Oh. There you go. Oh, That's oh, basically the same I think, thing. I think I, be, I think I could talk you that. Can, all right, so so there's this ancient um, Japanese art Gacy of quote? pottery. You know, sometimes their pots break, and they actually have this this method of of reforging the pottery pieces with gold inlay. Yeah. And it's actually yeah. it's more beautiful than it it was yeah. before it was broken. And that's you. You're gonna be all that's ribboned it. with gold, and it'll be better. Thank you, Spencer. Spencer. Let's hear it for Steve Levy, everybody. With a broken heart of gold. Also, Duncan Trussell for making everything all right. Let's thank Zach, Church, Sarah, Kevin, Chris, Noah, Matt at the bar. Spencer Clinton, your game master. Although we didn't play, but we found out that Dan loves jizz. I'm Jeff Davis, your comptroller. Thank you for having me back. Your mayor is Dan Harmon, everybody.
you get any of that? It's a good show! Feral Audio